This is John Hyman back uh, with the uh, Group 5, our final race. Not only is this the final race for Group 5, it's the final race for the entire championship weekend. It's late Saturday afternoon. We've got perfect weather for racing. The wind has calmed down a little bit, and uh, we have all of our drivers, all 19 drivers, set on the grid and ready to go. Temperatures in the mid-60s, and uh, we're looking forward to bringing you this, the very final race of this, the Eastern Championship Racing Series. The M3 in position, ready to take the drivers away. Tense moment for all the drivers as they prepare to pull away and start this race. We had a chance over the weekend to ask several drivers how they psych themselves up, how they prepare for one of the Skip Barber Formula Ford races. Uh, basically, I just kind of hang out by myself and get myself prepped and psyched and, and go over the track in my mind as many times as I possibly can. Uh, all the brake zones and the, uh, just going through the turns. Uh, get my mind focused in on what I'm going to do for the next uh, half hour. That's basically it. Um, just good, solid concentration. That's what it takes to go out there and do a good job. Uh, the problem isn't psyching yourself up before a race. The problem is calming yourself down. And uh, I do deep breathing exercises. I do yoga deep breathing exercises that were uh, designed uh, or, or taught to me by an 85-year-old woman who is a yoga instructor. <laughs> uh, I just try to think about all the basic lessons we've learned in the school here, uh, focusing on driving smoothly, uh, concentrating on uh, trying to make the best of your position when you start. Uh, actually, it's not too hard. I'm kind of naturally psyched up before the race anyway. Uh, driving a 9-11 to the track, usually a couple hundred miles to get to a track, doesn't hurt, but uh, I don't have that problem. Just getting around a race car, around a racetrack does the job. Our BMW M3 pace car pulls away. And the 19 cars that are in our final race, Group 5, begin to pull away as well. And as the cars come towards us in turn number one, let's set the grid for you now. On the pole, yesterday's race winner in car number 53, the black and white car, that's Gene Charette. Next to him in car number 11 is Tony Monk. Inside row two, Robert Prevo in car number 33. Steven Zuckerman in car number 50 starts next to Robert in position number four. Starting fifth, Ed Taylor in car 55. Michael Costa will start in sixth place in car number two. Frank Perry in car number 24 is inside row four and next to him, John DeVillers in car number 66. Paul Dooley starts ninth in car number zero and Carl Kester gets car number 91 and starts 10th today. Carlos Carniero Filo in car number eight is our 11th place starter and Marcelo Quirolo in car 36 starts 12. Inside row seven, Vaughn Hope Lemay's in in car number nine and Gerard Gencarelli next to him starts 15th, excuse me, 14th in car number five. John Bostic in car number six starts 15th and Tony Shea next to him starts 15th. Moving back to row number nine, it's Alan Smith in the orange car number 28. Outside row nine, Chris Vadis in car number 23. And our final starter in car number 20 is Gary Wilgazinski. And he'll start by himself in row 10 in our 19th and again final starting position. All of our cars through. Of course, a lot of the drivers today are in different cars than you saw them in yesterday. Of course, the uh, cars uh, are changed out all the time but the fact is that the cars are equally prepared so a driver should be able to step into any different car and they should be able to uh, to, to perform just as well because these cars are all set up and prepared equally. Of course, today's starting lineup is set based on yesterday's finishing order and Gene Charette brings them all around through the downhill and we'll keep our eye on the starter. Gene brings them to a crawl as they come down to the front straightaway. All the cars pile up behind him, and Gene accelerates away as all the cars get stuck behind. Let's see if they get a green flag. All eyes on the starters. They head to the start-finish line, and it doesn't look like we're going to get a green flag. No, the starter does not like the way the field look. Apparently, too many cars out of position or some of the drivers in the back trying to get a jump. So the starter indicates one more lap. So the drivers will set, their, uh, set the grid themselves and pace around one more time. The starter likes to see the cars all in order and nobody getting a jump on anybody else before they throw the green flag. 
So anticipating the green is one thing, but uh, if you do it a little too soon and you're out of order, the starter's gonna throw his hand up and show that one more lap. And that's exactly what happened. So we'll follow the cars around one more time. Sun shining on the track there. You can see the oil and rubber that's been laid down from the cars. Track really glistens this time of the day. Tensions are high as the drivers prepare themselves. Moving back and forth on the back part of the racetrack, heading towards No Name, keeping those tires warmed up and free of any debris. Car number 23, Chris Vadas. Once again, the car slow as they head the downhill. Shadows cast all over the downhill turn until they get just to this point in the downhill. And once again, Gene Charette slows the cars down to an absolute crawl as they come to the front straightaway. All the cars line up behind and Gene accelerates away. Let's see if we get a green flag this time, and we do. We have a green flag and the race is underway. Group five, the final race of the Eastern Championship Series is underway and Gene Charette gets a good jump on everybody. Four cars going into the first turn and Gene Charette will lead away. Tony Monk closes down and takes over second place. And it looks like, yes, Robert Prevo is in third and Steve Zuckerman's in fourth. All the cars are through and we have a clean start. Gene Charette leads away. Tony Monk in second, Robert Prevo third. Steven Zuckerman's in fourth. Michael Costa we see back there in fifth place. And it looks like Carlos Carnero Filo got an excellent start. And we see car number 50 all the way off. Look at Michael Costa nearly clips him from behind. And Robert Prevo comes to the inside of Tony Monk. But Steven Zuckerman most certainly went four wheels off this time. Robert Prevo sneaks by and takes over second place from Tony Monk. Gene Charette continues to lead. Steven Zuckerman will have to come into the pits. He dropped four wheels off for sure this time in the downhill. And again, he'll have to come in as we take a look at Robert Prevo. Robert sets out after Gene Charette, our leader. Steven will be dropped back probably all the way to last and he'll have to make up some significant ground. However, you know, this is a longer race today and we have seen drivers who have gone four off come into the pits and come back on and do extremely well. So don't write off uh, Steven Zuckerman yet. We're very early on in a 28 lap race. And Carlos Carniero Filo is now running in fourth place after starting 11th. So just like yesterday, Carlos Carniero Filo is absolutely burning up the track and he's pushing right now on uh, car number 11, Tony Monk. You see him there. The Brazilian pushing hard. Carlos told us that he used to race go-karts in Brazil before he came up here and started working for the Skip Barber organization and racing with them and he's looking for his first victory. Tony Monk looks inside Robert Prevo. Robert stays wide of the apex but he continues to stay in third place. But look at this, Tony Monk gets by Robert Prevo and Carlos Carniero Filo follows him down into the downhill. And Robert Prevo is dropped back to fourth place as Tony Monk takes over second. Gene Charette pulling away from everybody at this point and Carlos Carniero Filo is running in third. 
So Robert Brevo loses two positions, uh, backing up there in West Bend in car number two. That's Michael Costa. He begins to close in on Robert as well. Michael Costa started sixth, currently running in the fifth place position. He was able to get around Ed Taylor at the start, Ed running in the uh, sixth place position right now. Through the uphill. You see that uh, the, the chicane that's been installed there recently. Uh, of course, Lime Rock also recently has been repaved. The track's a lot smoother and nicer to drive than it was a couple of years ago. And one of the cars putting a couple of wheels off in the downhill and kicking up some dust. Now we pick up Ed Taylor, our sixth place car. Ed Taylor coming into turn number one. Ed in the yellow car with the, the, blue, the blue number 55 on the side. Although you see the Skip Barber stickers on the side of these Formula Fords, the drivers can uh, pick up their own sponsors and the Skip Barber people allow you to put uh, your own sponsor on the side of their cars. And we've seen that happen a couple of times, although not all that often here in the series. But certainly the Skip Barber sponsors' names are well uh, labeled on the side of the racers. Barber people very supportive of the sponsors. And one of the elements you hear talked about a lot in auto racing these days is the physical aspect and the physical training that a lot of the professional drivers go through so that they can compete in these long races. We asked some of the drivers here this weekend what kind of training they do. Done. <laughs> <laughs> you get another question? <laughs> okay, well, sorry we asked. You should be ashamed of yourself, guys. Uh, the, the response was almost across the board the same as the one Mark Fairhurst gave us there. We pick up with car number zero right now. That's Paul Dooley. Paul Dooley currently uh, running in seventh place. He started ninth today on the grid. Paul running right behind car number 55, Ed Taylor. Paul tracking him down. Well, if you're an absolute racing nut and the weather gets cold and the snow starts to blow, well, where do you go for your racing fix? Well, I guess you could go uh, ice racing somewhere if you wanted to, but uh, uh, those with any sensibility go down to Florida, and that's exactly what the Skip Barber people are doing. The Skip Barber Racing Series moves to Florida for the entire winter as we take a look at car number 24 heading into the first turn. Car 24, Frank Perry, currently running in eighth place. Skip Barber Series runs six races down in uh, Florida, both at Sebring and Moroso throughout the winter. Of course, their other programs are down there as well, the Lapping Days, BMW Schools, uh, the uh, Car Control Clinics, and so on. The Lapping Days are really at a premium these days. The driver is really getting competitive and uh, eating up the uh, Lapping Days uh, so that they can get the track time and the in-car time. J.B. Hyman Productions will be bringing you the entire Florida series on Sports Channel America. You'll be able to see the Skip Barber Formula Ford races from Florida in uh, New York and in New England throughout the winter months. So check your program guide for that. We'll look forward to bringing those races to you. First race is December 2nd and 3rd, and uh, there'll be six races total all throughout the winter. One race in January, a couple in February. We see one uh, early March on the schedule and the... Florida finale will be in April, middle part of the month. You're looking at car number six, John Bostic, who currently runs in ninth place. He's trying to catch up to Frank Perry. John started 15th, so he's made up some good ground already, and he's chasing after, uh, once again, Frank Perry, who you see there. There's the difference between Frank Perry and John Bostic, who gets it a little sideways there. John was running right up with the leaders yesterday and had a great run going and had some mechanical problems. 
had to start way back in the field today, but as I mentioned, he's making up some ground, and we have a long race ahead of us, so John has a chance to get right back into it today if he drives a smooth, consistent race. John's one of the fastest drivers out here, and uh, as we said earlier, John has several wins to his credit. So he's one of the better performers in the series, so we wouldn't count him out at all. Watch John negotiate the downhill turn and onto the front straightaway. John's done some uh, barber sob racing as we see Ed Taylor inside trying to take the position away from Michael Costa in car number two, but no, Michael Costa shuts the door on Ed Taylor. So the positions remain static. Michael Costa in fifth place and Ed Taylor in sixth. Our leader remains Gene Charette in first place. In second place is Tony Monk. Third place is Carlos Carnero Filo. And then we've got, uh, there you are, you just see him right there. Tony Monk, Carlos Carnero Filo chasing Tony Monk and Robert Prevo is in fourth place. So Gene Charette has pulled out a lead. As a matter of fact, you don't even see him on the screen there. Let's see if we pick him up in turn number one. But these three are going at it for second place. Carlos locks up one of his wheels as he tries to get underneath Tony Monk. Carlos driving very aggressively, but he seems to be a little bit more under control than he was yesterday. Carlos had several four-offs yesterday, and well, he's still getting squirrely out there, but he's looking a bit more in control. We saw just a glimpse of Gene Charette in front of these three drivers. So Gene appears to have about a four or five second lead at this point. And it's a tight battle for second place between Tony Monk, Carlos Carnero Filo, and Robert Prevo. We'll watch them as they come into the downhill. This is where the drivers will get the uh, momentum coming out of the bottom of the hill with a slower car in front, that's Alan Smith. They'll get the momentum and the draft. And here you see Carlos Carnero Filo getting by Tony Monk as they head into turn number one. And he completes the pass. He locks up the wheels. He locks them up. And he, oh, he nearly loses it, but he gets it under control. And while all that's going on, Robert Prevo sneaks underneath Tony Monk and takes over second place. So Carlos Carnero Filo locks up his tires. And look at this. Robert Prevo tries to get underneath Carlos Carnero Filo. And Filo is off. He's off the track. He doesn't drop all four wheels off, but he's been sideways. He only puts two wheels off, and if he doesn't go four wheels off getting back on, which he does not, he'll be able to continue. He loses several positions, but he's back on the track, and he's racing again, and he won't have to come into the pits, and that's important. And we have an incident in the downhill. We have an accident in the downhill. As we follow car number 20 through, we have a couple of cars, at least two cars off in the downhill. We're looking at Gary Wilgazinski in car number 20. Gary running 14th currently, but we have two cars, at least two cars off in the downhill, and let's see, uh, let's see if we can find out who they are. Well, there you see, I believe that's car number 36 coming into the pits. Yes, in fact, that is car 36, which is uh, Marcelo Quirolo. And you get a good look at the mechanics there and the check that they do on a car that goes four off. They're checking for damage. They're making sure everything's okay before they release them. And here we have the incident in slow motion. The, the second car in your picture there, you see, I believe that's car number 44, Tony Shea. He spins to the outside of the track. And Marcelo Quirolo, to avoid, slides to the inside of the course and ends up on the grass, not making any contact. Now, Tony, from this angle, we can't tell if he went all the way off the track or not. And here we are with Robert Prevo in second place, battling with Tony Monk. This is your battle for second place. Gene Charette, once again, quite a ways up in front. 
We do not see him in our picture as we take a look at these two. The car immediately up in front is car number 23. That's Chris Vadas. He's running currently in 18th place, and they'll be putting him a lap down here momentarily, the blue flag being shown to Chris. Gene Shred has a healthy lead at this point in the race as we're at the halfway point of our 28-lap feature race. On to the front straightaway, Robert Prevo and Tony Monk catch up quickly to Chris Vadas. What does it take to go fast here at Lime Rock? Well, we don't know, so we thought we'd ask somebody who does. We talked to Bruce McGinnis about what he thinks it takes to go fast at Lime Rock Park. Well, I think uh, at Lime Rock, you have to really carry a lot of speed through some of the faster corners. There's a lot of misconceptions about this racetrack, and, and many people think that it's a slow track, but the average speed here is as high as almost anywhere in the country. Um, I think carrying speed is important. Using the new Skip Barber approach called FB, flowing brilliance, is important. Uh, not over slowing for the fast stuff is really the key to going fast here at Lime Rock. With some advice from Bruce McGinnis, one of the top instructors of the Skip Barber organization, as we come back to racing action, car number 66, John DeVillers, and right behind him is Carl Kester. John DeVillers puts a couple of wheels off uh, the exit of the right-hander coming down the no-name straight. Carl Kester putting the heat on him. These drivers are running 12th and 13th respectively. To the downhill comes John DeVillers and Carl Kester. And now we get a look uh, just ahead of them of a group of cars coming into turn number one, John Bostick. John Bostick just sneaks around car number five, Gerard Giancarelli. And John Bostick is now up into eighth place and he's got his eyes set on the car just in front of him. You see him there, the only car in your picture, the first car in your picture. Car number zero is Paul Dooley. So John Bostick, after starting 15th, gradually makes his way up through the field. There's a look at Tony Shea. He's a couple of laps down to the leader at this point. Tony had the uh, spin at the bottom of the downhill. Then he continues racing. Car number five, passing through your picture, Gerard Giancarelli. He's being chased now by car number 24, Frank Perry. Giancarelli right now running in 10th place, just ahead of Frank, and here comes Frank Perry. He makes a move around Tony Shea, and as they head into the first turn, Frank Perry makes it around Gerard Giancarelli as well. So Frank Perry now takes the position away, and he moves himself up into 10th. Frank Perry started seventh in today's race. Trying to gain back some positions so he can collect some valuable points. There's your leader, Gene Charette, as he comes into turn number one, still not being challenged for the lead. Gene's got a very comfortable lead. Just at the top of your screen, you saw Robert Prevo and Tony Monk pass through. So as Gene heads to uh, the left-hander, the second and third place cars are just entering the uh, Big Ben section of the racetrack. So he has a fairly substantial lead at this point, and Gene needs to protect it. There's still quite a ways to go in this race, but he's got a good, comfortable lead. Gene Charette would love nothing more than to put together back-to-back -to -back victories here at Lime Rock. Yesterday's win for Gene is first on the season. A couple of victories and 40 points would move him up substantially in the standings. He's currently 33rd. We're back now with our second place car. It's now Tony Monk. Tony Monk has gotten around Robert Prevo, and Tony Monk is in second place and setting sail for the leader. Robert Prevo in third.
Robert running really well here this weekend. Third place finish yesterday for him was a good solid third place finish. Racing action continues as they come to the downhill. Tony Monk, Robert Prevo. Robert will try to get the draft and catch up to Tony Monk as they come to the start finish line. Tony Monk moves offline just a little bit to try and break the draft from Robert Prevo, and he does just that. Tony Monk a little bit low coming into the first turn, but he gets through and retains second place. Car number 44 is off. Tony Shea is off the track. Tony Shea, the driver that we saw had some problems in the downhill, appears to have stalled the engine as second and third place goes by. We pick it up again. Uh, Tony Shea off the track and out of harm's way. I'm sure the yellow flag is waving there and the right hander on the way to no name. But we're back with the second place battle now between Tony Monk and Robert Prevo. So there's a huge gap between first and second, and then another big gap between third and fourth. So this is where the racing action is happening right now. Alan Smith doing a nice job of waving the faster drivers by. Alan Smith running back in the field right now. He's currently slotted in the uh, 16th position. Alan started 17th today once again. And he does a nice job of letting the uh, two faster drivers go through, signaling them by. We'll see Tony Shea still stalled. It looks like he's uh, done for the day here. One of the things they teach at the Skip Barber Racing School is uh, driving etiquette, uh, signaling drivers by, checking the mirrors, the whole gamut. And we see a very fast moving object moving by Alan Smith. Who's that masked man? It looks like Carlos Carniero Filo in car number eight and he's back up into fourth place. You saw him have the spin in the left hander but he's right back on it. The drivers in the Skip Barber Racing Series, they come from all over the place and their racing experience is varied. We had a chance to talk to some of the drivers this weekend about their experiences. Well, really, uh, other than the Formula Ford Series here, uh, I've messed around a little bit with uh, Sports Renault, uh, but these cars are a whole lot more uh, interesting, uh, not such a tank. And uh, so let's hope that uh, we can learn something here. This is my first uh, race weekend, and uh, I'm so far pretty pleased with the results. So. Uh, We'll wait till the winter in Florida. Uh, karting in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And uh, that's about it. Then I came here to the Skip Barber, working and racing. How many years in karting in uh, Brazil? Just one. I raced many years ago in California motorcycles, about four years out there. Of course, that has nothing to do with this kind of racing. Very different. I've been doing this for about a year now with mixed results. <laughs> this is by far my best finish. This is it. This is my, my first race. I've done two previous lapping days in the Skip Barber Racing School. And this is my first weekend, doing a race weekend, and a pretty interesting event. My uh, first time out. Hope that uh, I, can't, I can't do any worse. Basically, finished dead last due to that flip. So I hope to do a little bit better this time. Uh, we uh, did part of the Skip Barber Series the year before, the Winter Series, and I did some of the Florida Series, and did this full series now. Back to racing action. Car number 36, Marcelo Quirolo. There's the drivers here from all over the place. The drivers, uh, uh, some of them here this weekend, intending on going on and pursuing a professional racing career. Others uh, just here to have a great time with some great people doing some uh, something they really love. Interesting that a lot of the drivers come from other forms of racing and come to the Skip Barber Racing Series for the competition. Of course, the three-day program offered here is the uh, the base that a lot of the drivers start with and end up in the series after doing the lapping days and perhaps the car control clinic. 
Marcelo Quirolo running in 15th place. Right behind him in car number 20. Gary Wilkazinski, once again we see uh, a nice uh, wave by there by Alan Smith as Frank Perry moves up. We see uh, Tony Shea's car has been pushed back off the track out of harm's way. And here we have car number 66 coming into turn number one. John DeVillers still battling away. And there's your leader, Gene Charette, getting ready to put uh, DeVillers a lap down. And right in, in front of him, car number five, and there's a yellow flag out. And Gene Charette gets slowed down significantly behind these cars. He's behind car number five right now. And there goes Gene By on the inside. Car number five, Gerard Gencarelli. So here you see Frank Perry and John DeVillers in front of Gene Charette and Ed Taylor right behind there. And I would say Gene lost a little bit of time in that little exchange. And there you, you see Robert Prevo and Tony Monk right behind and they've caught up significantly. They've cut into his lead significantly and here comes Gene Charette getting around uh, number 66 right now. And Gene, Gene slowed down just as he was getting ready to pass John DeVillers. He backed off. You saw him slow down significantly. It looked like something went wrong with Gene's car just as he was getting to the start finish line and now he's back to speed. But look right behind. It's Robert Prevo in car number 33, Tony Monk in number 11, and Carlos Carniero Filo. As Gene gets underneath, Robert chasing right behind Ed Taylor. Gene Charette, your leader. And there you see, right there, car number 33, the red car, Robert Prevo, Tony Monk, and Carlos Carniero Filo right behind in fourth place. What could have possibly happened to Gene Charette just as he was making the pass there on John DeVillers at the start finish line? Tony Monk comes inside and he takes a position away from Robert Prevo. We saw it earlier, he does it again. And Carlos Carniero Filo comes along with him. Into the downhill. Filo takes over second place. What a move from the downhill. He's gotten into second place. Carlos Carniero Filo takes off and sets sail after Gene Charette. Only a couple of laps remain. Robert Prevo trying to get third place back from Tony Monk. Tony squeezes him down and he locks up all four wheels and he goes off the escape road. Hand in the air. Tony Monk is all the way off. He's gone down the escape road and that's going to cost him a possible win. Tony Monk's got to back it up to keep from going four off and he'll re-enter on the pavement. And there we see Von Hope Lamazian and he's gotten around Robert Prevo as well. So Roberts dropped back to uh, fourth place and Michael Costa's right behind him. Robert Prevo running for the lead and now he's been dropped back to, uh, to fourth place. Here's a slow motion replay. It looked like Tony Monk tried to squeeze Robert and uh, it didn't work. He saved the braking till too late, locks all four wheels up and you see Robert Prevo going off as well at the top of your screen. And uh, hand up in the air, Tony Monk not too happy at all. And while all that's going on, Carlos Carniero Filo gets by, and he's in second place right now, and he's chasing after our leader, Gene Charette. The racing continues. Von Hoplamazian, you see right there, car number two, Michael Costa getting around, car number 33, and there's car number zero running in sixth place, and there is. Alan Smith off in the uh, in West Bend. It looks like he lost it uh, coming at the top of the uphill. The back end tends to get really light. It can be really tricky, but more important than that, as Alan Smith comes down, our leaders are going to be right behind him. And car number eight, Carlos Carnero Filo, has taken the lead away from Gene Charette on the last lap. The last lap of racing going on right now. We've got Gene Charette dropping back to second place. Carlos Carniero Filo is taking the lead away from him. And as they come to the downhill right now, the checkered flag will fly on Carlos Carniero Filo. And he wins. He wins his first race at the Skip Barber Racing School. Look at him. Look at him. Look at the hand in the air. Carlos Carniero Filo sliding around through the first turn. He loves it. He's absolutely ecstatic with his win.
The young Brazilian takes home a first place win. He gets around Gene Charette on the last lap. A fantastic final race here on Saturday, October 7th. A great way to finish the weekend. There's Gene Charette, the second place driver. He led from start to almost finish. Of course, we had the one lap that uh, where the uh, green flag was not shown and the drivers continued around for one more lap. So it was a 27 lap race. Gene Charette leads 26 of 27, but the most important lap to lead, the last one, and Carlos Carniero Filo leads that lap and he wins the final race for the Eastern Championship Series race, the Skip Barber Racing Series. Into the pits he comes. Carlos Carniero Filo will be greeted by his fellow mechanics. Look at how excited they are for him. Instructors, fellow drivers. As the cars come to a stop for one final time, the engines will be shut down and these cars will be packed up and they'll move down to Florida. Carlos Carniel gets out of the car and look at him, jump up and down and here come the mechanics to greet him and give him a congratulations and pick him up and shake him around and, uh, and oh, we get a little victory dance upside down. Uh, <laughs> Carlos Carniero Filo, the winner of our final race here, the Skip Barber Eastern Championship weekend. We've seen some fantastic racing all weekend long. We've had a great time bringing you all of it. We're glad you could be with us. And here we see, once again, we see the, the slow motion, the, the jump up in the air. We see the high fives. We see the, the lift and shake and the famous upside down dipsy doodle from Carlos Carniero Filo, today's big winner. So the final results for today's championship race for group five look like this. In car number eight, of course, finishing first, Carlos Carniero Filo. In second place, Gene Charette in car 53. Finishing in third place, getting around Robert Perivo is Vaughn Hope Lamazian. Mike Costa finishes in fourth place in car number two. Robert Perivo, after challenging for the lead, drops back after the incident with Tony Monk in the first turn, finishes fifth. Sixth place goes to Paul Dooley. Tony Monk again uh, locks up the wheels, goes off, it costs him. He finishes seventh. John Bostick work his, uh, working his way up smoothly through the field, finishes 8th. Carl Kester finishes ninth. John DeVillers finishes 10th. Ed Taylor in 11th place. Frank Perry finishes in 12th. Gary Will Gazinski uh, finishes in 13th. DeVillers, Taylor, uh, Perry, and Will Gazinski one lap down. Uh, as is uh, Gerard Giancarelli uh, finishing 14th. Two laps down to the field. In 15th, Marcelo Chirolo. Also car number 23 finishing 16th, Chris Vadas as well as Alan Smith in car number 28. And uh, not finishing Tony Shea, he was, uh, of course you saw him go off in the uh, turn leading on to the you know, no-name straight. He finishes only 16 laps and uh, comes in 18th place. And our final position, Steve Zuckerman, who did the four-off, he only completed one lap and that was the end of his race. Steve Zuckerman.